Today's podcast is with Penn State quarterback coach and offensive coordinator Mike Yersich, taken from the Pennsylvania Scholastic Football Coaches Association Clinic this past winter. I had the opportunity to meet Coach Yersich when he was coaching Division II ball and recruiting my school. And back from those days, I knew this guy really knew his stuff and was going to be a star. He's risen through the ranks and does an excellent job developing quarterbacks. And today, he's going to share some insight into quarterback play. I think some of it is obvious, but we don't apply it enough. Some great coaching points here that you can use really to take a look at your passing game, take a look at how you develop your quarterbacks, take a look at how you communicate and coach your quarterbacks up. There's a ton here, regardless of what kind of system you run to apply to your coaching as we get ready for camp in the 2021 season. This clinic talk is, of course, on CoachTube. I'll put a link to it. It's also part of a quarterback training bundle if you are a quarterback coach. There's some great courses in here. I'll share that information at the end of the podcast and links to all these things will be in the show notes. So here you go. Coach Yersich, Penn State quarterback coach and offensive coordinator. Improving the quarterback, pass game emphasis, okay? Very, very important right here. Train the eyes to stay downfield. Gosh, that's a, that's such a hard, that's such a hard skill to develop. One, we don't want quarterbacks getting hurt. So how do you develop this without really being live bullets? Tough. So if we can go team pass and hear the cracking of the pads and the mic has to get picked up by the tailback and the more avenues he has to throw to and keeping his eyes down the field, right, the better that he's going to feel that pocket presence. That is a slippery slope. That is a slippery slope. Sometimes, seven on seven, sometimes we've had an offensive line so challenged that when we go against the defense, the only clean reps and progressions he gets are in seven on seven, right? So that that is a touchy thing. But how do you do it? If everything's equal, I want to have more team pass than seven on seven any day of the week. I want the live rush. I want him getting in the habit of seeing it down the field. Now, with that being said, I think you have to be very, very careful of your backup and his offensive line, the second offensive line. And if he's getting back there and there's leakage on majority of his snaps, he's going to actually get in a bad habit and start staring at the front before he's looking downfield. And that's a bad gig. That's what Mahomes did the whole Super Bowl. He looked at the D line. Okay, I can throw it. And then he saw he couldn't have, he didn't have a chance. He didn't have a chance. And that's what will happen to your quarterback if those guys are just open gate. So you have to figure out as a coach, what's enough team pass for us, okay, versus seven on seven. Seven on seven is good. There's a place for it, okay? But if everything's equal, I'd much rather have a team rep over seven on seven any day of the week because it's real football. How do you other train the eyes downfield? Drill it, right? You do drops. You get in his face. Um, but it really is a mindset. It is a mindset. This is the quarterback. This is what I tell them. This is the quarterback. This is your toughness, right? There. That's your toughness, right? There. It ain't about running the football, putting your shoulder down, because I want you to slide or get the fuck out of bounds, okay? It ain't about that. It's about your willingness on third and 10 to hit the dig, and you know you're going to get smeared. It's one-on-one. -on -one. You got the dig. Is it going to be open? I have to anticipate it, but here comes the, I feel it. Here comes the 300-pounder, and wham, wham. Wham, wham! You got to have that as a mindset. That's where it's at. I call it the GM throw, right? That's the throw the GMs want to see, right? Because that's what the NFL is. You got to hang in there, hang in there. Here it comes. Boom, and you get blasted. It's what it is. If you don't want to do it, don't play the game. Play something else. Go punt. I don't care. Go play baseball. It ain't for you. But that's, you got to thrive in that, and you got to drill that into their mindset. That's got to be who they are. OK, teach escape hatches, escape hatches and run ups. Very, very important. Huge, huge. And a lot of this is feel now because we're training our eyes down the field. But yet, coach, now you want me to run up and you want me to know where escape hatches are. You're damn right. I do. You're damn right. I do. You, the good ones can feel it and the other ones will get used to it. And you've got to emphasize it. 
Where, when do you have air? You feel air. Get to your air, right? Know where your escape hatch is. What does that mean? So if I'm in a particular protection, and this one happens quite a bit, and this, this was like old Mount Union shit right here. We used to go roll right all the time. We split backs. We'd be under center. We'd be in split backs. He'd go roll right, double cross. Larry Carrick's, bam. And he'd do that. And this guy do that. And he'd base, base. And he had A gap, B gap, C gap. And the tailback had backside B gap to C gap help. And here we go. And the quarterback would do a little spin out, look in the flat. And it was this, this, this. It was an awesome play. This was one and this was two. It was unbelievable play, right? Twin set, twins right, okay? Just crisscross. Well, this guy's going to fight over the nose or over the center, right? And oftentimes, if you felt that leakage right here and you had to step up, the escape hatch was in that backside B gap because this nose is fighting across the center's face on the back block. So he's trying to rotate over the top and you wiggle up and boom, there it goes, right in that B gap. That's one example of knowing your escape hatch. That became muscle memory. Hey, I feel a little bit of penetration up front. Boom, get your escape hatch. Know where it's at. Now, that's that protection. That's one specific protection. Now, that can happen. It might be different on your six man. It might be different on your turn back. Probably no escape hatches on turn back protection. But five man or six man or guard pull oftentimes is backside because of that nose rotation. Know your escape hatches, right? Know your escape hatches. Okay, run-ups. We got a tremendous drill that we do, and I'm going to get into that uh, down here on the on the other bullet. But the, the run-up drill is the best, and I'll give it to you here in a little bit. Okay, quarterbacks, quarterbacks must know protections, um, identification stacks, and use their cadence. Okay, so we got to know, we got to know uh, protections, right, obviously. We've got to know, and I don't care what you do at, at your school that you're coaching. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care if you're five man. I don't care if it's six man. I don't care if it's seven man. I don't care if it's full turn back, right? What beats full turn back quarterback? He better know it. Oh, cover zero. That's right. We have seven and they're bringing eight, right? Cover zero is the only thing that beats us. Okay. Well, if that's the answer, then he should know it. Okay. What defeats us in, in lock slide protection on five man? Well, it's the will. He better know it. I can't tell you how many times and I'm, Trust me, I'm no know-it-all, okay? I've had quarterbacks not know the protection. Just what makes you hot? They don't know. That's baloney. I can't have that happen. They have to know. They have to know. I don't care what level you're on. You've got to teach them protections and what makes you hot. There's a reason Brady's played since he's, you know, 23 years in the league. There's a reason uh, Breeze throw, uh, plays in the league. They don't get hit. They don't take the big hit because they know where it's coming from. They know where it's coming from. They're masters at understanding the identification of the defense, who's free, who's not, who's accounted for. And if I don't have him accounted for, if he comes, I get rid of the ball. Incomplete. Throw it away. But I live. I live to play another down. Very important. So ID stacks, what does that mean? So for us, you know, what we call stacks is if I have my offensive line right here, okay, and I got H, X, Y, Z, just a two by two formation. All right. And if I got a two high shell, okay. And this other bullet says use cadence, right? So I don't care what you're in. If, if you're not using your cadence to unfold a defense, uh, um, I, I, I don't suggest that's good. You have to try to use voice inflection to unfold a defense. There are certain rules that we have on offense that you have to take advantage of. One, and I would write this down. One, because I have to remind myself. I do. Trust me. I have to remind myself. We're allowed to use motions. That's a big-time advantage. It can allow us to uncover man, one high, two high. It can allow us to outflank the defense, right? We're, they give us that rule, right? Why wouldn't we use it more, right? Next thing is cadence. They allow us to go on two. They allow us to go on three, right? Don't be afraid to, to move your cadence, and I've been there and I've done this, guys, but I just don't want practice to look like shit during training camp. I just, I just don't want to have to jump off sides and rip somebody's butt and go through all of the pain it takes to go on two. That is nonsense. That's nonsense. Shame on us if we think that way. You've got to be able to unfold the defense. Blue Eddie, Blue Eddie, it's a hot, hot, hot. And then if you see a stack, what's a stack? 
when I see a DB on top of a linebacker, that becomes a stack. A stack equals that guy's probably blitzing. So my protection better go that way. Simple as that, right? So that's a stack. Sometimes a stack can be on top of a corner, and it would be three by one probably. But if we're in three by one right here, right, I could get corner blitz. Well, that stack right there, a little bit of movement. I got a stack here. I better take my left tackle out to the corner. I better know that somebody's got the corner, whatever, okay? Know where your stacks are. Stacks equal, that's where it's probably coming from. At the highest levels, it's still coming from stacks. Find the stack. Use cadence. Guys, use cadence. That's a big one, man. I love this one. Teach the quarterbacks to be decisive. Right here. Teach them to be decisive. And, and so you have to have good teaching. In order to be decisive, you have to have good teaching. Make it black and white. If they do this, you're here. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. If the safety does that, who's your read key? My read key is the widest defender. Okay. If he does this, you do that. Done. Done. And if he's decisive, sometimes even when he's wrong, <laughs> the shit works out good. Because he's on time. He locates it well. And it might not be perfect, but he's on time. Good things happen when your quarterback's on time. Okay, good things happen. Okay, teach him to be decisive and coach it that way. So have always, his eyes have to be in, in the same spot every time, whatever concept it is. I'm not saying every play. If we call peanut butter and jelly, you're reading this and your eyes are here on this defender. And if he does this, you do that. If he does this, you do this. Simple. And it's every time. And every play, he's got to have that. You've got to have that drain or drilled into his mind of, of where his eyes need to be and, and the discipline within that. That's our job. I love this one. Use a score zone, SZ, score zone. Use a score zone pass period with a force the ball emphasis. And so we'll say, okay, we're going into score zone now for seven on seven. Okay, they're dropping seven, and maybe they're dropping eight guys, all right? And we're going to be covered probably 60% of the time. And that 60% of the time, I want you to jam the ball in there. On this drill, now, you know, do they get bad habits? I don't think they do. I think you're actually creating confidence and the ability to know when and where and how to put the ball in. But we're going to jam it in there. And if the ball gets tipped and there's a pick, it's not going to be – and an ass ripping session. We are not going to grade this. So if you have a quarterback battle going on, guys, we're not grading this. This will not be on your grade. We're going to drive the ball and force the ball in there here on the score zone during this designated period. Not all score zones are this way. When we get in the team, it's not like that. But this seven on seven score zone pass period, we are going to jam the ball. Progressions over cover reads. I've just had more luck with them. All right. Maybe I'm teaching it bad. I don't know that. But when the quarterback can go, is he open? Is he open? Is he open? Is he open? Run the ball. That's better than, is it three or is it two? Is it one high? Is it, is it man? Is it zone? Okay. Now, if you are going to have coverage reads, man zone is the best way to do it. And then please incorporate motion to identify whether it's man or if it's zone. Simple as that. Ask why did you? Why did you on every play? Why did you? Good or bad? I love this question. Why did you go to the out? Sometimes they do the right thing, but they say the wrong answer. It's amazing. Why did you go to the X? Well, I saw the free safety rotate. Great. That's exactly what you should have seen. Awesome. Why did you go to the Z? Well, I saw it was covered too. Why did you think it was covered too? Well, I saw the strong safety. Why would you see the strong safety? Because I looked at the strong safety. But the strong safety is not your read key. Who is your read key? The free safety. Well, then why were you on a strong safety? I don't know. Well, let's go, right? Let's go. Now you're getting why he did what he did. I need a why on every play. There ain't no, oh, I just screwed up. Baloney. Baloney. Not having it. There's got to be a why. There's got to be a why. Because there, uh, because the backup strong safety came in, and I, 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 I just, I don't know. I thought his mom was good looking, so whatever. I, I looked his way. I don't, whatever it is, I need a reason. I need a reason. Okay. Why did you why did you go to the to the H right here? 
Well, I thought it was blitz coming and, and he's my best matchup. That's a great answer. I like it. Good. Whatever you're teaching, that's fine. But ask, why did you on every play? It makes them articulate, right? It makes them think and it makes them have a reason. It makes them have accountability or be accountable. It makes them be accountable because they know my coach is going to ask me why I did this on every play. So I can't wander. I'm going to be held accountable. I think that's important. Some great information there from Coach Yursich. And it's part of a quarterback training bundle that we've put together on CoachTube. We all know that football is the ultimate team game, but those positions are not created equal, especially given the nature of today's offenses, whether that's spread or RPO or even option, where the quarterback is clearly the most important player due to his decision-making responsibilities and his direct impact on the outcome. Your quarterback's not only the biggest decision maker, but his ability to make those timely plays and efficiently manage the game routinely determines whether you're going to win or lose a lot of those times. So the ultimate question is, how carefully are you training your quarterback? Are you grabbing drills off of YouTube randomly, or are you learning and implementing what the best coaches in the game are doing? So this 10-course bundle gives you the most up-to-date training methods, thought processes, and drills for training your quarterback. And uh, here's a a short glimpse of what's in it. We have a course from LSU quarterback coach and offensive coordinator Jake Peets. Uh, He goes through some QB training drills and shows NFL game footage of those drills working out on the field. Uh, Number two is from James Franklin at Penn State playing quarterback or developing quarterback the Nittany Lion way. He's had a lot of great quarterbacks through his system. Uh, Course three is Phil Longo, teaching footwork and mechanics that they utilize to distribute the ball in their version of the air raid, and it's all about getting the ball quickly out, so that footwork trains that. Uh, We have a course from Kyle Wardzanski, Division II coach. He's the offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach now at Shippenburg University. He takes you through his practice week and looks at Uh, the drills that they use, as well as how he uh, scouts opponents and gives that information to his quarterbacks on a weekly basis. We have a course from Robert Wiener, who is the University of Toledo quarterback coach, and he covers everything from the QB play caller relationship to reads and manipulating the defense, footwork, scrambling, and understanding space. We have a course from Army West Point assistant coach Mike Sullivan, who illustrates the progression they use to help their quarterbacks watch film and better understand the opponent and the plan of attack he does go into understanding coverages there. Uh, course number seven is from Ian Shoemaker, Eastern Washington University offensive coordinator quarterbacks coach. Uh, he goes through what he calls their EOS or Eagle Operating System and talks about the mechanics of the throw, how to get the quarterback to understand uh, reads and goes through the drills uh, that he uses in practice. Uh, We have, of course, this course with Coach Mike Yersich. You heard a glimpse of it here, and he goes into the details and drills that they like to use. Georgia Tech's Dave Patnut talks about the way he believes is the best way to train quarterbacks, especially in regard to training a freshman quarterback. So we all have those young quarterbacks, whether they're freshmen now or just those young guys who are developing And he really boils it down to the essentials. And the last course we have in there is from Central Washington, OC and quarterback coach Zach Tinker. Uh, He shares elite quarterback play examples, talks about leadership as part of the quarterback's life, uh, goes through his 100 throw study, uh, goes through QB moves, practice plans, and a breakdown of some of his favorite routes. So this entire bundle, over $200 worth of Uh, materials, resources, 10 courses is available right now uh, on CoachTube. It's regularly, again, uh, $199.90. It's available for $67. The link is in the show notes. Uh, I think it's uh, just a tremendous set of courses to add to your library. And the best part of anything you get on CoachTube, all of these are chaptered. So as you go through your season and you're looking at, I need to solve this problem, that problem, I need a drill for this, You're going to have all of that right there. So some great training resources that probably you could even incorporate into some of your meetings and early on teaching of your quarterbacks. Again, grab that link in the show notes. Follow all we're doing at coachingcoordinator.com and follow me on Twitter at Coach K Grabowski.